Welcome to chapter three. In this chapter, we're going to go over running a model with PySwim and extracting some of the basics out of a simulation. Let's get started. So we're going to start by going to PySwim.org. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the examples section. And we're going to download the latte example. This will just take a minute. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move this over to a directory that I have for this tutorial series over here. And I can close the website. Let's go ahead and extract this. And then I just like to keep my file structure clean. So let's delete this. And then I also like to rename it just so we can keep it really consistent and clean. Okay, so the latte example, what I do, I have a bunch of Python code in here. And so this is one, this is the Python module that we'll be running. Um, I have a PDF here of kind of going through some examples and information. This is going to actually run uh, example network one. And I have everything in here as far as code and units and things like that. And then I keep these PNG files around just so we can easily reference it. So for starters, I'm going to activate a Python environment. This step is optional. Ideally, you do want to get into the habit of using Python environments, but it's not really critical right at the beginning when you're kind of just learning the basics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type source. And I have inside here, I have a directory for virtual environments. and I've already created one, so I don't really need to, we don't really need to go into the details yet. And then what I'm going to do is actually cd into the latte directory here. It's capital L latte. So we've got everything in here as far as our files. And I'm going to say touch. I'm going to make a new file. Latte writing.py. Okay. So that's going to create this file over here. You can see to the right. On a Windows machine, you can edit you right click on it and you can say edit with idle typically i have a bunch of versions of python installed on my computer um, what i typically prefer to do on, on my mac is to use a, a, a text editor called atom it's pretty convenient i'm pretty happy with it but there's a lot of options you're not really going to run it in the text editor so you can you have a lot of freedom with what you're going to do okay so we've got our module open here and the first thing we're going to do is we need to import our simulation module from PySwim, simulation object that is. So we're going to say from PySwim import simulation. The simulation object carries all the information for PySwim to connect to a simulation and that includes opening it and starting it, stepping it, ending it, closing it. So the simulation object actually has all of those functionalities on board. They're, they're different methods and things like that. The best way to write these things when we want to you know, consider interacting with our simulations, we're going to use what's called the context manager. So with the simulation, and then we're going to give it the directory, the path to our uh, example input file, example one dot inp and sometimes we like to put a letter r in front of here as sim and what we've done is we're creating a variable called sim which is a handle to your simulation and so now we are going to say we really just as simple as just want to run this model so we're going to say for step in sim so what we're trying to do at this point is we're going to iterate over the simulation. And when we do that, we've already called swim open has been called behind the scenes here and swim start is called. And then as we keep iterating forward, swim step is called. These are C functions in the uh, swim entry points. So if we do this and we hit save, then um, this is kind of the initial way to start our Pi swim interaction. Um, there are a number of ways to run this. If you're using idle on Windows or Mac or wherever, you would just hit F5 or function F5, and it will actually launch uh, uh, Python there. But what I'm doing on my computer, since I'm using this um, 
virtual environment, I'm actually going to call Python, and then I'm going to give it the path, and then that will run my model. So now what you see is example RPT. This just came out, and so I'll open that. I can open it in Atom as well. It says what version of OWI Swim we use to run this, and then we can scroll down to the bottom, get the information. So we just ran a model. Pretty straightforward. Um, but what we want to do is we want to start adding in some more detail because this is about extracting some basics. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up my cheat sheet here. I'll pull this in idle as well. Oops. I use my latte example here. Okay. And so let me close the RPT file. And so what I'm going to do, let's take some of these initial things out and I'm going to plop them in there. We're going to get some basic things. So the first thing is getting some information out of the simulation itself. We can grab the flow units and I added some kind of boilerplate print functions here. And then we're going to get units and the start and end times from the simulation. So if we save that and then I'll go ahead and run this again and we'll start seeing this information come out. So this is actually scraping it straight out of the, not, just, not the input file, it's actually scraping it out of the swim data model. So let's get a little bit more interesting here. Um, we're going to pull some information from nodes now, or just one node. So we've got this node 21. If you look at the PNG file here, node 21 is, I think this one right here. So I just can have that for reference for convenience. So let's drop this code in here and I'll talk you through it in a second. So node information. Uh, node 21 is a handle on a node. So up here, we actually have to add nodes. And since we're going to do links in a second, we'll add that as well. So this is the uh, nodes object, which is, we, we can go into more details about this at a different time, but it's essentially giving you access to all the node information in the model. And so the nodes object, we pass our simulation handle, and then we're using a get attribute of the actually ID name of the of the node. So printing another thing, and we're getting the invert elevation here and the full depth, and we're actually interrogating it, interrogating it to see if it's a junction. So another a different tutorial video, I went over the documentation and how we can look up what available attributes or properties we have for these different node objects and link objects. I have the link here if you're interested. So let's run this. Okay, and so we've got our invert elevation, physical depth, okay? So that's, we're pulling this static information out that we're using to set up a model run here. That's what these are. I'll do one more with link. And so this is, again, these are all physical measure, or like um, this is network information of the actual physical network. We're not talking about anything with uh, hydraulics yet. Or So, okay, we've got link info, we've got the inlet ID, outlet ID, and then let's get this to be a little bit more interesting. So when the simulation is running, let's actually start scraping information out. And I'm gonna change our simulation for loop iterator. I'm gonna add a little bit more info to it. So what I'm doing is I'm actually putting an enumerator on the simulation uh, handle. As we start iterating on the simulation, this enumerator is actually returning two variables. One is the index as it iterates forward, and one is the actual simulation step. And so since we're going to be printing something during a simulation, I want to be really considerate that when you use a print command in any, usually any programming language, but particularly Python, it really, really slows down your, uh, what like the data process that you're working on. So rather than print it at every time step, I'm using the uh, modulus operator. So every 100 time steps, it's actually going to print the simulation current time and the simulation percentage, the node depth at 21, and the link flow. Okay, so we'll run that. And then now we're going to start seeing, okay, we got all this interesting information here. We've got our timestamp, and we've got these various flow things. We also do remember the units. We just extracted them up here so we can we can identify what those are. And the last thing we're going to look at is before actually closing the simulation, 
we're actually gonna we want to print out some statistics so let's add these lines of code here and so in the node 21 statistics we're gonna get for example the max node depth out and there's a whole bunch of keys that we can use when we start extracting output information from a node so this is the handle this well these are really the, the um, a variable with the result and it's a dictionary of node statistics and link statistics for the conduit so we're going to do find the peak velocity and so it's really important to note that when we leave the tabbed in region of this for loop here where we stepped out we're still we still have our simulation open our simulation has ended but before closing the simulation we still have access to the results in these different uh, variables so let's save that and we'll run this one more time and then we'll look at some statistics these are some like for example average depth in the node we can get the max depth this is a python dictionary and with the other part here we've got some link information with um, different flow regimes and things like that so this is all very interesting. We got our peak velocity, and I believe this is feet per second. Um, I did leave a all of the information inside of this. I pulled it from the US EPA manual, uh, the, the hydraul hydraulics manual, so we can extract the units back out. We know what they are based on the unit system that we're operating in. So these are some basic examples of how to run a model and extract basic information with PySwim. Thanks for watching.